For years, Spirit Lake Lodge was a place where families would go to get away. Mark Smith's family ran the lodge for nearly 10 years and remembers what life was like leading up to the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Where at first everybody was really excited when the mountain looked like it was coming to life, but we didn't know what to expect. And now it's kind of laying low, you know, from March through April. For weeks, Smith and his brother, who managed the lodge, knew the spring and summer season was going to be a little different. They told us the, the Wednesday before the eruption uh, that it would probably quiet back down and we'd be back in our lodge by September. And, you know, and these are government scientists that are, you know, top of the line. Smith says nobody had any idea what was to come. They're thinking the mountain was just going to kind of follow its historical pattern of every 125 years, just have a little steam vent and then go quiet again. And uh, the difference was the bulge growing on the side of the mountain. Mark and his brother were able to go back on May 17th to check on the lodge. Little did they know that would be the last time they'd be there. They're having breakfast at eight o'clock in the morning because we were all getting ready to head back up to the mountain. And my dad was the first one to see it out on the deck. He looked out and said, damn, we're not gonna get to go up to the mountain today. Mark says there are a couple of things that still stick out for him that day. Because a plume had just started to rise and uh, little did we know that plume within minutes just rose up into the sky 12, 12 miles up and there were blue lightning bolts cracking through the sky and it was just unbelievable. And of course I was 20 years old so the first thing I did was run down get in my jeep and drive closer to the mountain. He drove back roads to try to get a closer look at the damage and saw how quickly the melting of the snow and ice started to swallow up trees. As we were standing there, you know, you could just hear the snap and the cracking and everything of the timber as it came around the corner. And lucky for us, the flow was only about 35 feet tall, not 100. And uh, it came around, wiped out the bridge in front of us. Smith remembers walking into his parents' house, which was east of the mountain, and that's when things really hit him. And the first videos were showing on the TV and the helicopter pilots had to fly up, you know, shoot the video and bring it back in those days. And uh, they were saying that they couldn't even find Spirit Lake. Their family's lodge was gone, buried under 500 feet of rock, ash and debris. And we watched and saw nothing but gray and steaming and, you know, there, you just you couldn't even tell where they were at. And that's when we suddenly realized that this wasn't exciting anymore, that this was just totally devastating. Nearly 60 lives were lost, including Harry Truman, who ran Mount St. Helens Lodge and refused to leave the mountain. Ain't that cute? What does it say? <laughs> Where were you in Mount St. Helens Blue? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Smith and his family had grown close to Truman and were the last people to see him alive. And I don't think he really felt too afraid or that he was too worried at that time. I got the impression that he thought he had actually beat it, you know, or he was gonna quiet down. 40 years later, Mark looks back at these pictures as a reminder of how grateful he is to have left the mountain when he did. Joe Ranieri, KGW News.